with the market melting down today after Fed Chief Jay Powell gave us the rate cut we expected, but I guess he was cagey about promising more. Let's not forget about what's going right here. Yesterday, Martin Marietta Materials, uh, which is really a remarkable company, it's the big maker of construction materials, think aggregates, cement, concrete, asphalt, reported a truly blow quarter, and the stock exploded higher. It surged 10% in a single session. How'd they do it? Martin Marietta delivered a $0.09 earnings beat over a $3.11 basis with a modest revenue beat. But the major development here was that management felt comfortable enough to raise its full-year forecast. Do you know the stock is now up more than 40%? The business, just for this year alone, the business is on fire, especially in the Midwest and Southeast. While Washington hasn't been able to pass an infrastructure bill, although there's some good news in Washington, there's still enough federal and state money right now to get things moving here. But don't take it from me. Let's check in with Ward Nye. He's the chairman, president, and CEO of Martin Marietta Materials. Get a better read on this incredible quarter and where his company is headed. Mr. Nye, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, Ward. Thank you so much for coming on. For having me. You know, Ward, I remember when, when uh, Martin Marietta spun, spun it off, and I said to myself, as a hedge fund manager, this is one you don't want to touch. This is going to be cyclical. It's going to go up and down. It's going to raise its dividends. It's going to cut its dividend. It's going to have big losses. 25 years later, none of that happened. How come? You know what? It's been incredibly steady run for 25 years. We've never cut a dividend. We're careful on our costs. We are, we're able to get pricing all the way through different cycles. And really, if you look at what's going on relative to infrastructure, non-res, and residential, we've been in the right places. And being in the right places with the right products makes all the difference. I'm glad you mentioned that because you are in states that have done better than the rest of the country. Because in some ways, I said, I hope Chairman Powell doesn't read how you're doing because you're doing much better. But You've also executed it in a way that makes me feel like that there's a bit of a secular growth theme here, even when you may not have, expect to have that in aggregates. Well, we're, we are in the right places. Our teams have performed extremely well. I think what you said is right. We're principally a southeast and southwest business. So we're where people are moving to. So if you look at population trends, if you look at employment, if you look at state fiscal health, those are the things from our business that really make a difference. But we also take good care of the cost side of our business. We recognize if we're selling aggregates for $15 a ton, we better be really good at it. And, and we are good at that. Now, uh, you did this quarter without basically Texas and Colorado, which are two very, very fiscally well-off states uh, because of weather. The weather was that bad. It was wet in Texas and Colorado. Those are our top two states by revenue. But what we're seeing, and you, you outlined it in the prelude, what we're seeing in the Midwest, what we're seeing in the Southeast really helped carry the day. And we like being in a position that we could have a beat as we in our half year raise guidance, as you said, for the rest of the year and have the the top two states actually hit by weather a lot in the first half of the year. Uh, I thought that was amazing. Now, uh, the one thing I, when I was listening to Jay Powell today, I was thinking, geez, I, I, residential, how's residential? Well, you've got some great markets for residential. We, really we do. doing well. If, if you look at national statistics, they're not that overwhelming. If you look at the stats in our top 10 states, and the top 10 states are 85% of our revenue, we're outperforming the nation, whether it's on total, single housing, or multi-housing. And, and multi has stayed very, very healthy all the way through their cycle. Now, I've got to tell you, I didn't think much at all of what the federal government just did the other day. But you made me encouraged. You seem to think that there could be something there for infrastructure. Well, it's interesting. The EPW, the Environment Public Works Committee in the Senate, came out, and they're looking at an extension to the FAST Act. They took the spending up 27%. So, again, this is coming out of a Republican-controlled Senate. We like the look of that. Now we think it goes to the House. House Transportation and Infrastructure will come out with their plan, likely more than that. The issue is going to be this, Jim. How are they going to pay for it over the long term? They haven't seemed to care about a lot of that lately. Well, the interest, they, they haven't. <laughs> but the other thing is we're hearing more and more talk about moving away from a gasoline tax. We're looking okay. at different forms of user fees, but moving away from a gasoline tax in the fullness of time is something that states are increasingly looking at and the federal government's going to have to look at as well. Okay, so I read in your transcript at one point, you say something good about Georgia and Georgia spend. Mm-hmm. How does this work? What it, it's, how do you monitor it? How are you ready? Because I mean, for all I know, Georgia, I mean, that's something, is it good or bad? But it's, you call it out as something that could be very positive. Well, here's what we see. Georgia has basically doubled its transportation spend over the last three years. That's incredible. Texas is at near record levels. Florida is as well. Almost every one of our top ten states over the last three or four years has raised their revenues relative to what they're spending on transportation in the states. So we have seen a shift 
really more of the burden to the states themselves. If we see something come from the federal government, it can be incredibly powerful to our business. Now, uh, we're, when I, I hear that, I say to myself, OK, that is not necessarily a reason why PAL shouldn't have moved. In other words, you're talking about specific events and things that happen in your areas because you picked those areas. Correct. And not necessarily that, that interest rates are low and people are starting to build all over the place. The, the, the takeaway from what you're saying should be if you execute well, you can do well in this environment. But if you don't execute well, it's, enti- it's entirely possible that things won't, be, won't bail you out. The Fed won't bail you out. We're seeing some markets that are very good markets for us that are still 25% off mid-peak, mid-cycle, not peak, <laughs> and we're performing extraordinarily well in those markets. Well, then what should happen is if you want to continue the expansion, some of those states are going to go back up to levels that you're ready for. That's exactly right. And, and that's the important thing to remember. We can meet the demand that contractors need in those different states. We have the capacity to do that. If we look at where we were several years ago, we put 205 million tons of stone in the ground. Last year, we were 30, 40 million tons of stone below that. And still made that much money. And and still had a very, very good year. So 810% gain since you came public, which is rather extraordinary. Uh, I, for an aggregates company, I mean, you really should be very proud because a lot of those companies have come and gone in this period. They don't even exist anymore. No, you're entirely right. And, and as I've mentioned before, we have an extraordinary team of people. They give me the privilege of telling the story. They put up the numbers. Well, I'd say your whole team is good and you're good, too. That's Ward and I, the chairman, president, CEO of Martin Marietta Materials. Guys, when this came public, I am telling you, it was one of my big concerns for the market. That was wrong. The big concern was not buying enough. Stay with Craver. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.